morning, kids. I'm Ms. Bev, and I'm the Children's Ministry Director at Bellevue Christian Church. And we're a church where ordinary kids are learning to live everyday life like Jesus. So, kids, before we begin, go ahead, stand up. We taught you a new song last week about the books of the Bible. So go ahead, stand up. We're going to sing that song again. Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. I'll tell you the truth about the book of Ruth. On the first and second Samuel, first and second King, first and second Chronicles, all those things. Lead to Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and Job. I want to go to heaven in a righteous robe. Singing Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Solomon's song, and the prophets are these. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Jay's lament. Ezekiel, then Daniel, to the lion's went. Hosea, Job, and Amos's tale. Jeremiah. In the belly of the whale Micah, Nahum, and Habakkuk's cry Zephaniah, Haggai, then Zachariah The last Old Testament books reveal The Malachi points to a prayer Letters of Paul, Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Paul, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and move on to First and Second Thessalonians. First Timothy, Second Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, and James. Two books from Peter and John's all three. Jude, the Jude, and Revelation. Welcome back. As you can see, Miss Bev has two friends with her today. These are my grandchildren. Uh, guys, would you like to introduce yourself to the kids? Who are you? I'm Silas. And who are you? London. Can you guys say hi to the kids? Hi. Okay, so London and Silas are going to help me today with the lesson. You guys want to help Grammy today? Yeah. Okay, good deal. So, we have been going through the year-long Bible journey for the past couple weeks, and we've been learning wonderful stories in the Old Testament, all the way from the book of Genesis, all the way down to the book of Ruth. We've gone through so many books of the Bible and learned so many wonderful stories. We found out that there are 66 books in the Bible. Today, kids, we're going to be in a book of the Bible called 1 Samuel. But before we get there, Miss Bev would like for you to say the first few books of the Bible with me. Do you think you can do that? Let's do that, okay? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Very good. And today we're going to do 1 Samuel. Here is a flyer that Miss Bev has. It's all the books of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And it helps us learn the books of the Bible. And we learned that the first five books are the books of law. And now we're in the books of history in the Bible. 
It's so exciting for Miss Bev to teach the kids the Old Testament stories. Don't we love to read the Bible? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the Bible has some pretty cool stories, doesn't it? And we've had two memory verses. And Miss Bev's going to get those up, and we're going to read those together. So the one that we've been learning is this. It says, never stop reading this book of the law. Day and night, you must think about what it says. Make sure you do everything written in it. Then things will go well with you, and you will have great success. Joshua 1, 8. Okay, here's our second one, London. We're going to read that, and then you're going to make your craft, okay? Is that exciting? Is that exciting? We need to make a craft. Okay, our second memory verse is, Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. And that's found in Ruth 116. And we learned all about that last week, kids, in the book of Ruth with Ruth and Naomi. So, are you guys ready to do something fun? Are you ready to do something fun? Yeah. Yes. Can you tell the kids what is today? What holiday is today? Mother's Day. Mother's no, it's Mother's not Mother's Day. <laughs> Think again. What is what shape is this? A heart. A heart. Mother's Day. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Everybody say Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Exactly. So we're going to do something really fun with Valentine's Day. So, my grandchildren, Silas and London, have made hearts. Show them your heart. Show them your heart, Silas. And we've written stuff on them. We'll talk about that later. But while, while Miss Bev is teaching the lesson, London and Silas are going to color their hearts really nice. We have crayons, and they have stickers. And they're going to go ahead, and they're going to decorate their hearts to show you at the end of the lesson, okay? Now, kids, also, Miss Bev sent home crafts. So go ahead, London and Silas. You can go ahead and start coloring and putting your stickers on. So Miss Bev also sent um, some crafts home in the mail with you guys. Um, they would have looked like this, or maybe yours looked like this. Um, so if you have those at home, go ahead, go get them, and then come on back and join us. We're going to make those at the end of the lesson also. Okay, so while Silas and London are coloring their hearts and decorating them, today, kids, we're going to be talking about having a pure heart, a pure heart, because God looks at our heart. And do you know that the most pleasing thing to God is to have a pure heart? You know, kids, if I told you to think about your friends that you have or people that you have met, I'll bet you, if I asked you what they looked like, everybody would look a little different. Um, some of our friends or some of the people that we know may have brown eyes. Some may have blue eyes. Um, some may have short hair, long hair, brown hair, blonde hair. Um, some people may weigh a little bit different than other people. Some have glasses like Miss Bev. All different things that make up each person. Um, but, you know, it's easy for us to see what's on the outside of a person. But what about the inside? What about the inside of all those people we know? All of us look different on the outside, don't we, Silas? Yeah. We all look different, don't we, London? I don't look like you. You don't look like me. We all look different. Yeah. And you know what? That's okay, London and Silas, because God made each of us different. Even but if your mom and dad are different. Even if your mom and dad are different, that's right. But we're going to learn today, kids, that what's on the outside isn't what matters. God cares about what's on the inside. He wants to take a close look at our hearts. Everybody put your hand on your heart. God cares about what is in our hearts, just like he did with a man named David. And that's who we're going to learn about today, is David. So Miss Bev is going to read a story out of our storybook, The Beginner's Bible. This is um, the story about David, and it is found in the book of 1 Samuel. Everyone say 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, yes, that's a book of the Bible in the Old Testament. And it's found in 1 Samuel 16, 
1 through 13, and we're going to read it in a storybook, okay? Saul was a good king for about 20 years. Then he began to disobey God. God was sorry he made Saul the king. Samuel was sad about it too. God sent Samuel to a man named Jesse to find a new king. When Samuel met Jesse, he said, I would like to meet your sons. See the pictures? When Samuel saw them, he thought, these are strong-looking men. God said, I do not look at the outside of a person. I look at the inside of a person. I look at the heart. Everyone put, put your hand on your heart again. Mm -hmm. Samuel asked Jesse, do you have another son? Mm -hmm. Yes, honey. I'm all done. Okay, go ahead. Just keep covering a little bit more if you want. Samuel asked Jesse, do you have another son? Jesse said, yes. His name is David. He is out in the field with the sheep. Samuel asked to see him. There's David out with the sheep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See David? See David with the sheep? As soon as David arrived, God told Samuel, he is the one. I want to be the next king. Samuel anointed David. He poured oil on David's head. And David was filled with God's power. Wow, what a cool story that is. During this time in our big God story, Samuel was a man who was a leader for the Israelite people. We've been talking all about the Israelite people. He helped solve their problems and did many things God asked him to do. Yes, honey. Very nice. He had an important task, an important job to do in the book of 1 Samuel. The people had begged God for a king to rule over them. They weren't satisfied with just having judges. We've been talking about judges the past couple weeks. God knew that an earthly king would not solve all of their problems. So he waited for just a little bit. But finally, finally, he gave them a king. Saul, everybody say Saul. Saul. Saul was the first king of Israel. How about if we wait to do this with the kids? Go ahead, keep coloring, honey. Saul was the first king of Israel, but soon enough, Saul's actions did not match what God told him to do. So a new king was needed. To choose the new king, Samuel, everyone say Samuel. 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 Samuel went to a man's house named Jesse. Jesse had eight sons. Can you all count with Grammy to eight Let's put our hands up and count. You at home, help us count to eight. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very good. That's how many sons Jesse had. That's how many. That's how many. Go ahead, put some more stickers on. Hey, guess what? Yes, honey. Um, uh, what? This is what? This, um, this is. It's okay. Here, let's just finish putting some stickers on. I, wanna, I, I have to lay on my knees. Okay, go ahead. Get up on your knees. And... Seven of them lined up before Samuel, seven of Jesse's sons. God told Samuel that he would show him what to do. So, by looking, Samuel thought that Eliab must have been the chosen one. Maybe because he was tall and strong and handsome. He looked pretty good on the outside. But you know what, kids? Eliab wasn't the choice. All the other sons kept lined up, and they weren't the choice either. They didn't pass the test. Samuel questioned Jesse to see if he had any more sons. There was one more son, David who was the youngest. Are any of you the youngest in your family? You are the youngest. If you are the youngest, raise your hand. Yes. And you know, David, the youngest, he was away taking care of sheep. 
He wasn't even thought of for him to come in the lineup. They didn't even think to bring David in. But Samuel demanded to see him. And when David arrived, Samuel knew. He knew that David was healthy and he was good looking. But those are not the reasons he was chosen. God reminded Samuel that while man looks on the outward appearance, when, he, when man looks on the outside of us, God, God looks at our heart. Put our hand on our heart. Yes, David's heart was pure. He was just the man that God wanted to be the next leader of his people. That day, Samuel anointed David. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. God was with him, and he was ready to lead him into being Israel's next king. You know, kids, David was not perfect, and even as a king, sometimes he messed up. But he did his very best to follow God's plan and to lead the people in a way that God desired. In his heart, he wanted to please God. Who wants to please God? If you want to please God, let's put some thumbs up. Do you want to please God? Yes, me too. And you know what? Kids, it is so important for us to remember that when God looks at us, he is not looking at our outside appearance. He's not looking at the color of our eyes or our hair or our skin color. He's not looking at how tall, how short we are. He's not looking at the kind of clothes that we wear. He's not looking very nice. He's not looking to see if you have big muscles and you're strong. He's not looking to see if your hair is combed perfectly or how much you weigh or if you wear glasses or if you don't. Those things are not important to God. Your heart, just like David's, is what is most important to God. He looks at how we treat people. Are we kind and loving? Are we understanding and forgiving? Are we honest? Are we a good friend? Are we trustworthy and sincere? He looks at how we make decisions, kids. Do we make good choices that serve him and please him? And he looks at how we follow and we serve him. You know, kids, sometimes, kids and adults do this. We judge others by how they look on the outside. We see somebody and we judge them by the clothes that they wear or how they look. But this week, kids, I encourage all of you and myself to look, to not look at the outside appearance of kids and adults. When you meet somebody, don't judge them by the outside appearance, but let's look at their hearts. And you know what, kids? We also make, need to make sure that our hearts are pure. Our heart needs to be pure just like David's. Because you know what, kids? That is what pleases God. And that is why God chose David over all the other sons Jesse had. He chose David to be the king because he had a pure heart. So kids, London and Silas have been working on our craft. Like I told you, they have been coloring hearts. And this is what I want you to do at home. I want you to go ahead and get paper, just like London and Silas have done. Cut out a heart. You can use any color. We used pink and red, didn't we, kids? Because it's Valentine's Day. And what you're supposed to do is... Um, Grammy had you write down before we start things that make you a child of God or are good characteristics and being a good person. <laughs> huh? Let's see here. On, London, on Silas's, we wrote that Silas likes to share and Silas is kind. <laughs> Silas is honest and he's a good friend. On London's, we wrote London is kind. She's a good helper. 
Look at London Stylist. You see that? She's a good helper. She's nice. And she's thoughtful. Can you guys turn your hearts around and show all the kids at home what you've made? We have stickers all over Grammy's table, huh? Yeah. Can you see how nice those were? Okay. So kids at home, go ahead, get a heart and take a, a marker or crayon, write some characteristics of um, who you are, things that makes you a child of God and makes God happy because we have a pure heart, right? Mm -hmm. Now, once you do that then, kids, this is what I want you to do, London and Silas, okay? okay. They're going to take these home. London, you listening? We're going to take these home, and we're going to put these on our mirror or somewhere that you can see it and remember that the okay. kind of person you are inside is what really in, matters. I'm going to put on the way. The refrigerator. So the person you are on the inside is what matters because that's how God sees you. And those are the things that Miss Bev loves about each of you. Do you know that's what Grammy loves about each of you is all these things on your heart. Okay, so let's put our this hearts like aside. A, this is like a real heart. You do have a heart on your shirt. This is, this okay, is like let's, a real heart. It is like a real heart. So let's go ahead and get our foam craft that we have. Everyone get their foam craft. Go okay. ahead, start. Um, you can start pushing out the foam crafts. Go ahead, start pulling your pieces aside, London and Silas. While they're doing that, kids, parents, I want to remind you that we always send these make it stick um papers home and I'm hoping parents and grandparents are going over these with your kids uh, going over the lessons uh, talking about them and um, really talking to your kids about what it is like to have a pure heart and how God looks at that heart so we're going to go ahead kids if you have yours at home start taking it apart and the first thing you're going to want to do if you have this one like Miss Bev is you're going to want to peel the back off. These are sometimes tricky, I know. Go ahead, peel these off like that, and you're going to want to put the white heart in the middle of the purple heart. London and Silas, go ahead, pull yours apart, and then we'll go ahead and do what, yours. What, what? Pull your, can you take um, um, take your cross off there? Can you, um, but can it's you too poke? hard. No, you can get it. Take your time, babe. You're good. Okay, now Miss Bev's going to peel this apart. And I'm going to put, this is my picture of Jesus. Jesus is going to go down there. And then I'm going to peel off the words that say, Jesus loves me. So if you have the one that Miss Bev is working on, this is what it'll look like when you're done. Okay, Jesus loves me. And then you should have a um, rectangle shape kind of like this. And a magnet, this, you can attach the magnet to this and put it on the back to go in the refrigerator, okay? Now, kids, you can do one of two things with these when you're done. You can either go ahead and put on your refrigerator, but you know what I would really like for you to do? Is I would like you to find somebody that you can give this to, to share the love of Jesus with them, okay? So go ahead, see for Valentine's Day, if you could find somebody and just go ahead and give them that heart so that they can put it on their refrigerator. Okay, so London and Silas are going to go ahead and peel their crosses off. And what they're going to do is the cross is going to go in the middle of the heart. Go ahead, London. You need some help, honey? Okay, let's go ahead and we're going to put the cross right in the middle of our heart. So Silas, can you put that right in the middle? And then we're going to peel the hearts off. You have Stickers, hearts, sticky hearts over here. Go ahead, peel those off. I'm going to help Silas and put those all around the cross. Okay. Are you making yours at home with us? I hope so. Go ahead, um, yeah. put your hearts on. Put them yeah. all over. You guys are doing an awesome job. Look, we have pink hearts. We have red hearts. Are you guys enjoying these crafts at home and remembering to have a pure heart like David did? Because that is what God looks at. Huh? God doesn't look at our outside appearance. He looks at the inside of our heart. 
Okay, no. now Silas and London, very good. They also have a magnet. We're going to put those on when we're done. Let's go ahead and turn our crafts around, though. Let's show the kids how great we all did. Look how nice. You guys did a great job. Here, turn yours this way, London. Thank oh, you. Yours is a little crooked. We'll fix it when we're done. That looks great, guys. You did a great job, huh? Mm. Do you like those? Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's put those down. We're going to go ahead and finish ours when we're done. Um, kids, as always, we love when they join us for the lessons, don't we, kids? Yeah. You love when the kids join us to do the lessons, London? Yes, me too. Well, kids, we hope you've enjoyed this lesson on David and having a pure heart that serves God. Because remember, kids, God doesn't look on the outside of parents. He doesn't look at us on the outside. He looks at the inside um, of a pure heart. And that's how we need to be is a pure heart. So kids, have a wonderful week. Um, I hope to see you next week. Can we say goodbye to the kids? Have bye a great bye. week, and we'll bye. see you next week. Okay? Bye. So everybody say bye. bye.